All right, let's get Fina up on stage here. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now from Hawaii, running for State Senate District 20, the west side of the island of Oahu, is Fina Bonome. Fina, thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning, Adam. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Aloha. Aloha. Yeah. Now, you're, you know, you're a, a second generation libertarian. That's becoming increasingly common. How did that happen? Well, um, I mean, aside from I, the obvious, you know, you know, when two, when, 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 you know, two libertarians love each other very much, you know, and, right. and I, I think we can we'll skip ahead to the good parts. Okay, I'll, I'll skip ahead to the good parts. Um, my uncle, my uncle was the uh, dominant male fig figure in my life, and he was a libertarian. And you know, we would sit around and um, talk about the news, and we'd talk about politics, and um, that was mainly my influence growing up. So to think anything other than a libertarian and a libertarian principle is just kind of foreign to me. Now I don't, I don't mean to cast aspersions or throw shade on the great state of Hawaii, but mm -hmm. isn't it already paradise? Why would you have to run for office and change anything in Hawaii? Oh, well, our government out here in Hawaii has um, pretty much all Democrat. It is all Democrat. In fact, the person that I'm running against, um, he used to be a Republican and he switched parties to be a Democrat so he could win. And now, I mean, he's been running unopposed too for a while. And so, um, yeah, so there's actually one other option on the ticket this uh, this year and, and I'm it. So I, it's just me and the incumbent de Democrat. So there we go. Well, what, what's wrong with Hawaii? What is it that is the priority for you that, that you want to fix aside from the typical you know, bipartisan bullshit? Okay, so what's wrong in Hawaii is for one thing, we're in lockdown again. <laughs> we're like back to square one, day one, lockdown. Essential businesses only. Masks everywhere. You know, um, it's we're the people are getting tickets for going to the beach. That's what's wrong right now. I mean, this is this is what's wrong. Um, there's also, I mean, one of the things is that's wrong is like the businesses every day. There's a new business going out, going out going out because of the shutdowns every day. And so the economy has to be one of the, the priorities that I change or try to get started. So, yeah. And how I want to do that is to bring uh, gaming into Hawaii. Right now we don't have any gaming. There's no lottery. There's no gambling. There's no gambling boats. There's no bingo even. And I mean, there is. And let me tell you, there is people are going to jail and it's probably the same people that they round up every time going to jail for having gambling houses in their neighborhood. Right. So people are going to jail for bingo. Well, I don't know if it's well, they've got bingo. They've got little uh, like video games. Right? Yeah. 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 And, and my thing is, why do we got to lock them up? Why not just zone it? Because nobody wants it in their neighborhood anyways. That's the deal. Just let the people that are running it, run it where, you know, where we say that it's okay. You know? Well, yeah, I hate that it has to happen that way by government, but but I get your point that that's a, a you know. Well, I mean, um, that's just legalizing. It's, it. it's decriminalizing. It's, it's it. Right? Yeah. I mean, you should, I mean, but this is, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great idea for Hawaii's sake, right? Like, Mm -hmm. Why not have tourists leave even more money there? Why not give them the mm -hmm. opportunity to support the economy through gambling? Uh, that's it's that yeah, kind of surprising that they haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. Now the shutdowns, the, the getting tickets for going to the beach. I, I heard that tourists who came in were asked to do a two week quarantine at their hotels. I assume now it's locals going to the beach getting tickets then. Is that right? Is tourism That's like correct. totally shut down? That's correct. And the parks, the parks, the beaches. And we have, you know, we have a homeless population out here, right? And where they go to the, the bathroom, where they, you know, usually go to shower, those places are closed now. Like the, the parks, that's where they usually, you know, 
and we're closing those places. And the only way you can, you can still access it. Okay. There's a loophole, but this is really creepy. Okay. This is really creepy. The loophole. If you go there for exercise. So if you lay on the beach, if you're caught laying on the beach, you have a towel laying on the beach, you get a ticket. But if you get in the water, you're good. And it's really, it's very silly. It's very silly. So we have an exercise police. We have, that's what we have. We have an exercise police. It's like so four out here. I don't have a face big enough to palm for that stupidity. That's like it's. A, I don't want to say it's unfathomable because government has done dumber, more evil things. But it's it's 2020. This mm -hmm. and this is up there. Like really, holy shit. It, so I, I got to ask, Tina, you know, for the people of Hawaii, mm -hmm. are they supporting this? Are they going along with this? Are they rolling over? It would seem that the, the, yeah, where you would have this kind of worse lockdown, there would be a bigger revolt. It's It's mixed. It's mixed. I think that there is a growing number of people that are wanting to... Um, revolt there like the last night that we had before the lockdown went down again there was people out on the beach until like midnight which was when it was like gotta go stay home now and like a lot of people just at the beach like that's one of the things in in hawaii is that's like you know very taboo you don't deny people access to the beach i know that much i'm not from hawaii originally uh i don't know if you know that or not but i'm a, i'm originally from north carolina and no, um Say again. Nobody's perfect. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, yeah. So surfing is still allowed then. Yeah, surfing's still allowed. But don't go lay out on the beach with your board. Don't just go after you're done catching some waves. Don't go enjoy the sunset with your board on the beach. Like that's that's. Mm -hmm. So, Fina, you're campaigning for state senate in Hawaii. How are you connecting with voters? Well, um, I've been doing sign waving, so I've got, got some signs behind me. That's not illegal yet? Well, it is right now. But before the official lockdown, lockdown, we've had stages. We've had stages where we're not allowed to mingle with people from other households. Like, they, that, that's... That was the words. You're not allowed to mix households. Family cooties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has it been effective? I don't. I don't think so. It's. By not the way, I, I didn't really realize what I was asking about there. I, I I was thinking about the lockdowns. Has that been effective? But also, are are you do you feel like you're able to be effective campaigning amidst all this? Well, okay, so I was doing the sign waving. I, I didn't let me finish that question real quick. So I was doing sign waving and I was doing like door knockers, like I have these little do not disturb signs. Right yeah, those are great. Yep. I was putting those on people's doors, going out and you know, wearing my mask sometimes, not all the time. I'm mainly I'm not knocking on the door or ringing the doorbell because I don't want it to like, you know, I'm I'm cool with just I don't know who's there, you know, and I'm out by myself because social distancing and everything. So yeah, then I Zoom sign waving and now it's nothing. Like, well, I've got some Zoom meetings set up. Um, I've been making little commercials for Facebook and stuff like that. I do a lot of graphics. So I guess maybe I'm going to step up my meme game. Not really sure. Why, why not engage in some civil disobedience then? See if you can get arrested for sign waving or, or something like that. I mean, I go for my neighborhood walks too. I've got t-shirts that I wear. And on my neighborhood walks, I like to go and smoke some weed. So, and I go to the park smoking some weed at the park. Um, so I, I feel like I, I'm pushing the boundaries as much as I'd like to. Um, because like I said, my, my competition isn't really doing anything. He's not, uh, I don't think I said, told you that, but he's not really campaigning much right now. In fact, on his website, this was kind of funny, right? Is there, the first paragraph when you go to like his website, it says, I need your support, especially this year, 
because I'm not running unopposed. There's a, a newcomer named Fina Benoan that's running as a libertarian. And I'm like, wow, wow. He put that on his website? Yes. I'm like, okay. Your so name is on his website yes. like that. Yes. My name. My name. Right. Mm -hmm. I was like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like if you, if you don't win this cycle, you better keep going with this race. Like, you better keep after oh, this dude. Sure. You better keep after this seat. But no, I, I want to um, say, I think he's going to retire. I think he's going to retire after this. And honestly, I think that maybe he's ready to retire and nobody was willing to step up. And I think, I think that's part of it too, because he's, he's, he's an older gentleman. Well, well then you'll have a huge yeah. advantage next cycle uh, with a leg up on name ID, even against two new old party candidates, I would hope. Oh, for sure. It seems like right now, and, and, and particularly true about you in, in, a, in a Senate race, state Senate race, and you know, a, a relatively small district, right? Uh, what, what's your population of constituents? Um, I think it's like 25,000. Okay. So you, you have a, 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 a sort of kind of strangely captive audience, right? Captive mm -hmm. by the state. And you have a unique opportunity to, to, to break out and reach all of them. And I'm, I'm not against retail politics by any stretch of the imagination. You got to build that foundation. You got to go out mm -hmm. and shake hands. And well, mm -hmm. I guess, I guess kissing babies isn't really a thing anymore. Shit. Shaking hands not, is barely a thing anymore. I'm not, right? I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not kissing anybody and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even shaking hands. I'm doing the shakas. That's like, that's why I got, you know, right here. Oh, geez. The shakas. <laughs> And that's a Hawaii thing. People love it. People love it. I love it. It's aloha, spread uh, spread aloha, not germs kind of thing. Ah, uh, yes. Because yeah, people do appreciate that. People do appreciate being courteous to others and not spreading like germs and whatnot. But it, it, would um, seem, it, it would seem like you have a unique opportunity to break out with something viral to catch people's attention in your district. And, and I think Getting around, I mean, hey, what do I do? I get arrested when I need attention for something like that, right? Yeah, but, I saw, I, I, I read your record. I read your record. I was like, whoo, whoo. I, I think, I think there, this might be like, I, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, sit here and pretend like I'm your campaign manager, but okay. I, I just, I want to encourage you. I want to give you, you know, the, the, the support and encouragement uh, to, to maybe have, the, the courage to go out and do no, something. Adam, no, no, I'm not going to jail. I'm not going to jail. Oh, okay, I, not, maybe not I, that I, necessarily. I've been to jail <laughs> on the other side and I'm not going to jail. They would not be able to hold me because I've been a prison guard before. I'm not going to jail. You would not be able to hold my ass. I mean, no, hell no, I'm not going to jail. I'm not going to do anything well, that's going to get me to go to jail. Well, hold on. You don't, getting arrested doesn't mean going to jail. Uh, a lot of my civil disobedience arrests mm -hmm. have been very planned and even you know negotiated with police in advance where it's a sight and release kind of thing. They arrest you, you, you get the video, you get a ticket. You can I mean for a misdemeanor, they give you a ticket and a court date, and and you're you know you're free to go usually after that. Now, I'm not saying that that has Ooh, to be. Are you asking have I dealt with the cops out here? Hell yeah, I've dealt with the cops on several occasions. On several occasions. In my favor for most of them, usually under um, landlord and tenant disputes, which is big out here in Hawaii. Because the government's right up in the business of landlord tenant dispute. Uh, and there doesn't need to be out here, right? Like So right now, the governor has issued a um, no evictions no evictions. Like as a landowner, as a property owner, like, okay, so I'm, I own my home. Right. And, but I, re I rent out rooms. Right. So this is my home. This is where I live. If someone wasn't, you know, paying rent or something, I should be able to like, go ahead, you know, find some, find somewhere else to go. I've got, I still have to pay the mortgage. The mortgage still has to get paid. Cause if I don't, if, you know, if I don't pay the mortgage, then none of us have a house kind of thing. You know what well, I mean? Yes, they can just be abusive. That's and a that's license for yeah. tenants to be abusive. And that's what happened in, in my situation with um, a roommate that I had. He uh, was totally rude, totally abusive, threatened my campaign, 
Yes. Like, and so I had, I, I called the cops and I, I got a, um, I got a, um, a restraining order against him and which made him have to leave because he cannot be within X amount of feet of me. So I, I let the law work for me. Another oh. instance where I worked, had the law work for me. I was at the hospital one night or one night. I, I just, I had a fainting spell. I don't know. So the next morning I'm going to the hospital, right? I get my friend to take me and they, they test me for like the Corona symptoms and everything. And I get to like go inside the building on, almost at the security place. And they're like, let me take your purse. And I'm kind of like in and out of it. Cause like I had a fainting spell in the middle of the night. It's first thing in the morning and I'm going to the hospital. Right. They got my weed pipe in my purse. I'm coming to the hospital for help. I'm a medical marijuana patient. Like I have a, a license to have this, right? They confiscate it. They will not give it. They, they did not give it back to me. They had, they, they basically told me to call the cops to come and get it. And at this point I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe this is like actually happening. Like I'm trying to get help. So I leave the hospital because I still need to go to the fucking hospital. Right. And, um, I go to the military hospital because I'm a veteran and my husband's still in the military as well. And um, I get seen there and discharged and everything. Meanwhile, those fuckers have my pipe, right? And so I went back to that hospital and I called the cops and I had the cops come out there and I got my fucking pipe back because more, this is like that asshole just took $40 out of my wallet and said, you can't have it. That's what that was. That was fucking stealing. And I wasn't having that shit. So Did yeah, you have to press I, charges? No, I didn't need press charges. I got my pipe back and I, and I embarrassed the shit out of them and everybody around. I don't know. So, I wouldn't, I, why, why, well, I guess if you get it back, right? But why, why I not? Uh, I was wondering why not? I'm going to go back to that hospital. You know? <laughs> and I'm going to keep telling this story. This is, this is my district. Okay. Well, Fina, what what I was what I was getting at with the, with the civil disobedience or or you know staging an arrest in in protest of all of this nonsense wasn't necessarily to to say it has to be this tactic, but mm -hmm. I, I just I think you have a really beautiful opportunity to do something. Uh, to 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 really break out and and get everybody's attention and and win this race and I want to just encourage you to do that and and I want to make sure that everybody in my audience who's watching sees that uh, Fina has a unique opportunity and is a libertarian candidate was worth supporting if you can throw her a few dollars to support yes. just the printing of literature this is yes. she's running this is uh, trust me this is the definition of a grassroots campaign she mm -hmm. doesn't have sponsorship running as a libertarian for a state senate seat and it requires people like you on the internet if you don't have someone as, as good as fina an opportunity like that with a libertarian candidate in your area find someone like her and support them and of course you can do it from anywhere in the world no matter where you are you can reach her constituents on the internet you can donate and you can support her like that so fina, I, or anything it doesn't even matter you know like just having the number of donations is cool too. Um, Absolutely. You know, we've already raised quite a bit of money. We've already, but, and we're putting out these mailers and the mailers are what's expensive, but they're what's most effective out here because it's going to get in the hands of every single person. And I've got some pretty sweet media. Our mailers are pretty sweet. Um, I know earlier you guys were talking, uh, Mercedes was talking about not fitting in the boxes and stuff, right? And that's kind of like one of those libertarian ideas of thinking outside the box. And so like our next mailer is going to have a little game for people to, to like play and everything like the, the, the items that we're, we're sending out, these, are, these are things that people are going to actually look at. Right. So um, yeah, but we're about like probably about two, 3000 short of getting a third mailer out, which is what we'd want to get out ideally at the end, mid to end October, right when everyone's getting their ballots, because we do think we're, that people are going to vote early. So, so Fina, the website is Fina F E E N A, the number four district twenty. I love that you got four twenty in there, Fina. Yes, four I do. District 20. Yeah, that was intentional, right? 
It sure was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love it. Fina for district 20.com. You see it up on the screen there. Fina, thank you so much for being those, one of those poorly behaved women making history. I think I'm, I think I'm behaving pretty well. You know, the quote I'm referencing, right? Oh yes. Well, oh, I, have, I definitely know. Well, I have women seldom make history. Mm -hmm. I have that right in my house. As soon as I like. Trust me. By the establishment's perspective, you are behaving very poorly. And for that, we thank you. Well, thank you, Adam. Thank you for having me.